you so much that you have such a peaceful And then it will mute the 
audience will be able to know what the lyric is. You guys will shut up. <laughs> <laughs>
How about that? Do I need to go back? Yeah. How are you guys? <laughs> are you back yet? From the Carlos and his night feet, all that stuff? Um, anyway, analogies. I love analogies. I love metaphors. Um, God's given me a weird knack of taking one story to, and then explaining um, a biblical truth using that story. Um, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. Three analogies. Um, one has nothing to do with a water bottle. Two has nothing to do with adoption. And three, and the year parties. Um, and the other thing that I want to share with you guys is I love to brag about God. I love to brag about how good He is and how weak I am. And so that's how my analogies and my metaphors are going to tie in today. Um, but before I do that, I want to open us up in prayer. Um, so, let's go to God. Hey God, um, I want to thank you Lord for this day. I thank you for all of you who are here and who can make it. Um, I thank you Lord for this whole year and just the truth and the good things you've done. I thank you Lord for the speakers that we had and just the lessons and the heart that they've shared for us. Father, I pray that as um, we end the year today, that you would speak through me. Lord, the things that you've taught me, Lord, I pray that you would teach um, these students today. I pray, Lord, that you would help me to speak well, and that they would hear you and not me. And so, um, yeah, we welcome you, Lord, here. And we pray that you would glorify yourself through me today. And so, yeah, we thank you and praise you in this name. Amen. Um, the first thing is the water bottle story. Um, and I want to start with the gospel. Um, and the verse I want to go, go to is 2 Corinthians 5 21. The verse says, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, that in him might become the righteousness of God. And a lot of people call this verse the great exchange because there's that exchange of sin and righteousness. The Bible says that. We are sinful, and we have all this brokenness and all this wrath that we deserve because of our sin. And over here, Jesus is righteous and perfect and holy. And that verse is saying, all our sinfulness, all our brokenness, all the bad things that we have, God says, he poured that all to Jesus right here. And, and the Bible says, all the righteousness and all the perfectness and all the goodness and all the blessings that Jesus deserves... He poured it all onto us. The great exchange. And I wanted to start here because for some of us, this is review. This is Gospel 101. Um, but what I want to bring it home is this truth is not only for our salvation. It's not only, oh yeah, we get to heaven. This truth can be applied in a day-to-day -day, um, living. This great exchange can be applied to our lives every single day. Um, and to demonstrate that, this year I've experienced a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry. Graduation, um, losing a lot of my friends. And there would be days I would wake up where I could feel my heart beat, like just pounding because I'm so nervous and anxious about things. And when God taught me this lesson of the great exchange, He said, Whatever anxiety that you have, I want you to pour that onto me. I want you to surrender that onto me. And this promise that there is peace found in me, I want you to claim that. I want you to grab that, and I want you to trust me that I, I can provide you that peace. I want you to exchange your anxiety for my peace. Um, another thing, there's this sense of longing sense of not being content. There's a sense of I'm missing something or I'm longing for something or someone. Um, and a lot of times that's kind of stuff in my tracks. It's like, I can't love people because I have no love to give. And so God's saying, Robert, whatever this longing or satisfaction that you have, I want you to pour that onto me. I want you to surrender that to me. And I promise you that I will give you my love be my joy. Exchange your unsatisfaction, exchange your craving, and I will exchange my joy and my love to you. And these are the things that I've struggled with this year, 
And maybe it's different for you guys, or maybe it's the same. Maybe for some of you guys, there's some hurt in your past, someone hurt you. Maybe you can surrender that to the Lord, and He can exchange His comfort, His healing. Maybe there's a sense of lacking in your life. A lot, a lot of you guys are going to summer projects or doing mission trips. There's a sense of, God, I need support. I need all these things. You can surrender that lack to Him, and He can provide you for you know, His wealth, His provision, His riches. And some of us, maybe there's some sort of sin area in our lives that we just can't <laughs> defeat or get over. Even in that area, God says, I want you to surrender that. I want you to pour that onto me. And I will exchange that for holiness. I will exchange that for righteousness. The Bible says, for our sakes, he made him to be sin, he no sin, that in him might be his righteousness. So whatever this thing, whatever is in your water bottle, Whatever is in the water bottle, whatever you're going through right now, um, God is saying, pour that onto me. And as you empty all your water, all the dirty water in your water bottle, I'm not going to pour that. I'm just going to drink this still later. Um, and it's not good to wet the floor. Um, God is saying, as you empty whatever is in your water bottle to me, you can trust me that I can fill it up with the blessings and the goodness that I have in store for you. And that's the most awesome thing that God can teach you this year, what it looks like to surrender the things that is weighing you down and trusting Him for the good things that He has to store for me. Um, the second thing kind of relates to the water bottle story. Um, I said adoption. Let me back up a little bit. Um, in Ephesians, uh, Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus. And from chapters 1 to chapter 3, Paul declared all these good things that is true about them. And I'm going to give you guys a quick list of the blessings and the good things that Paul is saying, this is true of you if you're a Christian. He's saying, if you're a Christian, if you are in Christ, you are blessed in every spiritual blessing. You are chosen before the creation of the world. You are saints. You are holy. You are blameless. You are brought near to God. You are fellow citizens in heaven. You are adopted sons and daughters. You are given grace. You are saved. You are redeemed. You are forgiven. You are the dwelling place of God's spirit. You are members of God's household. You are predestined. You are included in Christ. You are sealed with the spirit. You are recipients of God's lavish grace. You are recipients of God's glorious inheritance. You are alive with Christ. You are building blocks of God's temple. You are raised with Christ. You are seated with Christ. You are God's worksmanship, or His artwork. You are members of a new humanity, and you have access to God the Father. And again, to us, it's just a list that we've heard before. But in a way, do we actually rejoice in this truth? Do we actually believe that these are true of all of us? Um, some of us, maybe even for me, like, oh yeah, I read this, and this truth I've read it before, but does it go from my head to my heart? Do I actually believe these things? And what Paul says in chapter 4, after he listed all these things, he said, I, Paul, as a prisoner of the Lord, then urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Now this word worthy can be interpreted in two, th two ways. One, you could say, I need to be worthy of it. I need to prove myself that I'm worthy of these things that God's given me. I need to show God or the world or myself even that all these things, all these blessings, that I deserve them. Or it could be another way. Um, and this is the way that, that Paul is using it. This word worthy, um, he's saying, live corresponding to what is already true of you. Live in congruent of what is already true of you. Um, it's basically saying, Become who you already are. When God says you are holy, then be holy. When God says you are righteous, then be righteous. When God says you are loved, then be loved. When God says be joyful, or you have my joy, then be joyful. When God says, I've already filled your cup, your bottle, to the brim, then live as if you are living to the brim. 
Live as if you're already complete and live as if you're already you're not lacking anything because you're not. And that should be a great joy for us, knowing that that's his promise. That he's already given us everything that we need. Um, and this is where the, the, the adoption story comes in. This whole section about living worthy of our calling, I just, I heard it from a sermon actually. And the pastor was talking about how there's, there's this couple who adopted a child. And when they brought them, when they brought the child to their home, they loved him and he was awesome. But then one day they found that there's like breadcrumbs and food in his bed that he's hiding. And they were like, what's going on? Why is, why is there food in his room? And so they asked him, and they were like, well. And they found out the reason why this child was doing that was that his former family, uh, when he would do something wrong, they would punish this child by not giving him food for the weekend. And so from Friday to Monday, he would not eat. And so this child, so he could survive, he would steal food. And when the parents found out, they were so grieved, they were so sad that this is how the child grew up. And that's how the child sort of thinks about life. And so they came up to him and said, my child, you're in our family now. You're in my household now. You're with us now. You don't need to steal food anymore. The fridge is open. There's plenty of food here. You are, there's food for you, it's all yours. You can have as much as you want. You don't need to steal anymore, you don't need to hide food anymore. And in the same way, it seems like in a, in a different way, God kind of looks at us the same way when we turn away from Him. Um, there's some truth that there's still, but the way, when we do sin, there's that judgment, and there's that wrath. But in a different sense, there's that grieving of God. When I turn away from Him, He goes, Robert, why are you turning away from me? Why are you looking for all these other things? For friends, for your approval, for grades, for jobs, for relationships. Why are you turning towards these things when I already have all the food that you want? I already have all the peace that you can enjoy. It grieves me that you don't trust me. It grieves me that you're stealing food when the fridge is open, when all my blessings is up for grabs for you. And it reminds me of David. Um, we're going through David in our Bible study today, or this week. Um, one of the things we talk about about him is his courage. But one of the things that I really love about him is Psalms 23, verse 1. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He said he will not want, he will not steal, he will not crave. And the reason is, he said, the Lord is mine. The Lord is my shepherd. He realized that he is God's. He realized that his water bottle is full. And so he's content. He is happy. He loves God. And when God comes to me during my times of longing, my times of craving, my times of not feeling full, God is saying, Robert, I'm yours. Everything that you want, everything that you need, is found in me. Rejoice. Live as if you are already full, because you are. Live as if you're complete, because you are. And so, we went from pouring our dirty waters onto the Lord and trusting in Him that He will fill it up with His goodness. And now we learn that not only that, He makes sure that our water bottle is filled with the brim. And God is so good that He doesn't just stop for the brim, He overflows it actually. Not just for us, for our benefit, but for the benefit of other people. And that's my third point, the end of the year party. Um, but before I talk about the end of the year party, I want to backtrack again of how I got to the end of the year party. Um, I'm a fifth year, and so this is my last year. So I'm excited to graduate. Woo! While you guys are graduating, congratulations. You guys. Um, but part of this graduation season of my life, there's a sense of, I'm done. I want to 
get out of here, I, I'm burnt out. You know, I'm tired of school. I'm tired of, how to say, I'm tired of ministry because I've done this for five years, and I'm like, I just, I just want to cruise along and finish, like, you know, get out of here. There's a sense of I'm checked out. There's a sense of I'm only thinking about myself and like this is this is my last year of college. I'm done. I don't need to invest in people. I don't need to talk to people. I don't need to, my free time can be mine now instead of investing in you guys. And that was how I was functioning majority of this year. Um, if you notice that I've, I've been gone or you notice that I haven't been around, it's because of that. But God is good. God is really good. Um, he used a few people. He used Brock and Jim. And he used the Holy Spirit to give me a quick wake up call. And he's saying, Yes, you only have this year. Yes, you only have this year. Those people, that community, you're never going to see them again. You won't be able to invest in them the same way ever again. The people in your department, your friends, your classmates, Yes, you only have a year with them, but you're never going to invest in them the same way ever again. Because you won't see them again. You won't even talk to them again, because you guys are going all separate ways. And God convicted me of, like, I've been wasting my time this year because I'm graduating. And he's saying, don't. You have, you have one year left. That's a lot of time. And God even convicted me of that, of, like, Yes, I have one year left. Yes, I have six months left. I can still invest in people. And it kind of grieved me of like, I can't believe that's how it's been functioning. I can't believe I've checked out. And I was like, God, if you want, if you would still take me, would you still use me? Even though I only have six months left, even though I feel like that's not a lot of time to invest in people, would you still please use me? Because I don't want to miss out on these things. I don't want to miss out on what you're doing in your lives. For this six months, if you still want me, please use the word. And I got to the point of like, why did it take me my last year to recognize this urgency? My last year to recognize I don't have as much time with you guys. And God is saying, you have a weird way of thinking, Robert, because you know this already. You know that at the end of the year, in every classroom that you have, maybe it's like two or three weeks before the end, you start not caring what people think, so you just talk to people. You just, you say hi to everyone that you see because it's the end of the year, you won't see them anymore. And you get this sense of confidence to talk to people because next year you won't see them. But it takes you the end of the year to actually talk to people. Why don't, you, why don't you do that at the beginning of the semester, at the beginning of the semester, the beginning of the quarter? And God convicted me of that. And he was like, you know, you have one year left. So that same excitement that you have at the end of the year, that end of the year phase of excitement with people, have that same excitement in the last six months that you have. And I was like, yes, God, I want to do that. I want to talk to people not care what they think. I want to be that kid who talks to people every time. And Everywhere, and I don't want to. I don't care what they think about me as long as I get to know their name and you know I get to go to restaurants and that. I want to be that kid. And I was like, God, why did you? Why did I learn this earlier? Why did I learn this in my last year of college? And then he whispered to me, You have about sixty to seventy years, maybe, in this earth. That's a lot of time. But then he goes. Compared to eternity, compared to forevermore to forevermore, 60 to 70 years is like a second. It's like a split second, it's like nothing. And God says, that time that you have in this earth, I want you to have the same urgency to talk to anyone at your work, at your family, anywhere you go. The same urgency, the same excitement that you have because it's the last day that you, you will never see them again. For 60 to 70 years, I want you to have the same excitement, the same passion for people. Because you're never ever going to see them again in light of eternity. For 60 to 70 years is so small compared to forevermore. 
And God is saying, I've given you so much. I've loved you so much. Don't just keep it yourself. Let your cup overflow. Let your water bottle overflow. And that kind of ties into our theme of this whole quarter. First John 4, 19. We love because He first loved us. We are filled to the brim and we're overflowing because He first did that to us. And let's keep being filled by God. Let's keep coming to Him for the things that we need and allow us to overflow the people around us. Um, I want to end with this. I told you I like to brag about God and kind of put His goodness compared to my weakness. This is how He loved me. Um, for when I was younger, and even sometimes, even here, there's a lot of times where I feel alone and I feel like I can just stand in the corner and like no one is talking to me and I'm fine because I like to watch people. Um, but <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. But um, before, I would just do that and no one would talk to me. People would just go to their friends and they would go to the people that they know. And no one would recognize me. And um, that was lonely. That was sucky. Um, especially because sometimes I'm a little bit weird and I'm different from a lot of people. Um, so that's even harder for me. But the one thing that I remember from God is He recognized me. He acknowledged me. He came and says, I see you, Robert, and I love you. And because of that, I make it my goal, I guess, to like wherever I go, wherever, whatever meetings that we have, look for those people. Look for those people who are by themselves, who are sitting themselves, who are self cutting themselves. Everybody just passed by because they just rush with them to their friends or they just rush with their clicks. Or because they're weird. I'm attracted to those people because I was one of those people. And so I love them because that's how I've been loved. And my question for you guys is how has God loved you? And how can you show that same love to other people? To some extent, before Christ, we were also alone, we were also separated from God. And we were just in our own little corner by ourselves. But Jesus came to us, and He recognized us, and He saved us. So, my charge to you guys as I'm wrapping up, this is my last few weeks with you guys. Um, for all of you guys graduating, I want to charge you guys to not waste your job, not waste your life. Talk to people, love people. And for you guys who still have two, three, four years here in college, you might think that's a lot of time. That's not. That's very small. That four years is going to go by quick. Trust me. Feels like I just started college yesterday. And so I want to charge you guys. Love people the way you can love by God. Love because He first loved you. And that's what I have to share with you guys today. Hey, God. Um, I thank you, Lord, for all of the things we've done. I thank you, Lord, for scripture. I thank you, Lord, for the cross. God, I thank you for Jesus, that he died for our sins. And not only that, Lord, that he rose again, and we have new life in him. Lord, I pray that as this truth of how much you love us, this truth of how much you bless us, God, would sink into our hearts and sink into our lives, that we would, it would go from our head into our, into our hearts. God, I would encourage and I want to challenge the students here Lord, that they might love freely, radically, the way you love us. Lord, I pray that as we end this year, you would help us to be excited for the summer, for whatever we're doing. Help us to be excited for the fall and for the rest of our lives to love you and to love others. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Just name.